This Saturday, it wouldn't have happened without Mary. Oh, well, I have lived and worked in this area for a long time. Um, and I'm getting to the age where it's nice to think about what you leave behind. And so I have a friend in Devon who has um, developed a orchard imbued, a community orchard. And I was very inspired by that and I thought, ah, that's what I want to do. So um, the first thing was to talk to the council. Um, and I have worked with the council quite a bit in the past through the, the Bohemia Ward Garden. And uh, to say to them, could we have a piece of land along here to develop a community orchard? And uh, they said yes. We have to go through to get a license and all that stuff, which takes some time, but we've got all that now. So basically, this area here, as can you see, there's like a what I call a desire path just along the middle there, yeah. where the, the grass is a bit rougher. We can walk up there anyway. So basically, it's up to that little desire path, down obviously to the trees, and round again. And we have engaged um, Brighton uh, Permaculture Trust mm. um, because they have an orchard team and they have planted community orchards all over Sussex. Um, and they are they are overseeing us put the planting part of it. And uh, Bryn Thomas, who's the guy who's leading it, he's been leading it for about 15 years, so he knows what he's doing. He came and did an assessment, and we had. Uh, Chris Wilkin there, who's the uh, Mrs. Borough Council Officer, who's also been exceedingly helpful and still is. And Nick Hennessy, who's our local ranger, one of well, one one of the now. known ranger I call him. <laughs> and he is also extremely helpful, so we're very lucky. So basically the idea is that we have a fence just from along by the two paths, not the whole lot just really to demarcate the area <coughs> and in February <coughs> we have got ordered 12 bare root apple trees some of which are Sussex so we were very careful to research what we what we had you yeah. would help me with that so that will be happening with volunteers which we are currently um, getting and we've had a lot of interest and I've recently met one lady who's done her orchard project training and another young lady who's doing it. So we're going to have stacks of local expertise as well. And the idea as well as to have the orchard for the community is that we engage with the school and the church and surviving the street and other people around us, houses all the way around here. And it becomes a place where people can meet, socialise, have educational activities, and uh, yeah, so it's all really about the community. It's about engaging local people. Um, the fence is being constructed by um, TCV, Trust for Conservation Volunteer. Unfortunately, they've had a bit of a problem with a couple of issues. So now we have got Tim Hills, who's the manager of TCV, who was in Hastings prior to um, recently being promoted. And he came the other day, so we will get that so it is better, because it's rather hippity-pippity. And then Nick's going to help me get a nice notice board, so we have a proper notice board. And the other thing we're doing is what Judy is uh, going to help us with. I'm sure she'd like to tell you about it. Right, well, um, I'm not sure how it starts to do it, Mary. I think you said you wanted... A a wildflower meadow. Well, I think, could we have that as well as the trees? Yeah, here? and I said, well, I'm sure we can. <laughs> um, but at the moment, we haven't we haven't done anything. Because of the, the, we don't know where the trees are going to go, there didn't seem to be much point in trying to do anything this autumn, although autumn is possibly the best sort of time. Um, what I've been thinking about is basically something that will turn out like neutral grassland, which is one of the primary habitats around here. Um, and we will start doing something in the spring. I done. I did a bit of a survey. Originally, we got a plot down there, and that was a bit I surveyed. And then we got this one, and it was quite late. So, having another look at what was there was quite difficult. But there's already this. It's got um, netweed and meadow meadow 
little bit metal, metal bit sling and various things. So what I'm planning for the moment is I'm raising plug plants for planting in the spring. And what we will do, we can then involve children. We, we'll have the trees in by then and we can work out where we want to put them, whether we want them all, all, all over the place or concentrated. Um, that will give you the start. We can see they're all, the seeds all being collected locally. Um, as, or some of the plants that I've collected, but basically it's all, it's all local stuff. So we'll put those in, see how they go, watch everything over the summer, and then decide in the autumn how to take the whole thing forward. Um, we don't really have the money to do it as a, you know, a big project and take the topsoil off and all the rest of it, and I don't actually think we need to. I think we can probably do it bit by bit, lots of people like to do things faster, and get the plants in and they will spread and we can help them along with things like yellow rattle and stuff like that. So that's, that's what I'm thinking about at the moment. We have to see how it works because we will have trees with lots of shade, but on the other hand, and we can put things near the trees. Not everything likes um, full sun. But the other thing I'm keen to do is to link the plants with some of the local, particularly butterflies and bees that we know around here and also use it to um, teach people or help people learn about native pl native plants and the difference between things like, I mean, you, you, I'm sure you know, the word term wildflower meadow is used <laughs> in a very loose way quite often. And I'm just keen that people understand that, you know, this, this will have native species and it's actually, as I say, it will end up as neutral grassland. You can call it a meadow, that's fine. But ho hoping to get a bit more understanding of all the different sorts of ways that people use that term and what, you know, how you can think about it and things like that. I think the last thing to say, which is, I think, very important for me particularly and I to do this, is that we're both very keen on education. And when I say education, I actually mean active learning for children, yeah. creative learning. So the way I work with um, young people and children and adults as much as possible is through things like storytelling and art mm. and actually learning by doing, which is what I think we're going to be able to do with yeah. the And I will bring my lenses along yeah, be fantastic. and I'll get them looking at things and there's sure to be one or two that will say, wow, I think this is a great yes. thing and continue yeah. with it. And the others will, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if people don't know the names and things like that, but they actually have some understanding of how things work. Well, we got the um, we got a local artist to, to draw out all of the. They're all native species, aren't they? Those sixteen species we used in those meadows this year. But we're going to do more woodland for next. I think in terms of. I don't want to speak on that. I think in terms of the starting point for the um, the meadow.